let you know that you are here tonight with the Benton Harbor St. Joseph Arts and Culture Social Justice Group. We've been meeting for, um, for some time now, uh, and we are helping advocate for and, and move forward this project, that, which was founded and the vision of Sharon and Mac Brown, who are with us tonight from the African American History and Literature Gallery in Benton Harbor. So you do have uh, several partners and cultural community leaders on the call tonight, uh, including members, uh, staff and, and community members from Lake Michigan College, from Craslow Art Center, from uh, various arts and culture organizations in our community. So we're really pleased to have you here tonight. And I am going to, we're all gonna mute ourselves and let you uh, share with us a little bit about yourself and, and how you've been looking at this project. Great. Thank you. So um, I guess um, I've been using a lot of words in my sculptures lately. I just feel like words sort of help bring a, another facet to um, uh, a piece where um, when I think it's sort of a multifacet way to sort of um, bring the viewer in. Some people maybe draw on more to the, um, the written word, some more to the image, and then I think they both support each other to, to create the whole story. So I, um, you know, looking at the, um, um, the legacy of the Reverend Martin Luther King, I have always loved um, the letters from Birmingham. I just think this is such a powerful, powerful um, piece of literature. And um, I thought, you know, wouldn't that be fun to sort of compare it then with um, Let Freedom Ring, since they were both sort of written for two different audiences as well. And I think that was kind of similar to Benton Harbor and um, 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 St. Joseph. So I thought well, that might be sort of a nice way just to use those pieces of literature because they had those, that audience that was, you know, varied and, um, and just sort of um, use some of the imagery, you know, from, from those um, pieces. Um, I was, um, I thought, you know, a lot of Martin Luther King um, memorials are sort of elevated. And I kind of wanted to bring these down to sort of ground level, um, I guess, I or, you know, more interactive. I just felt like it's his, um, his message is more important now than it ever, I think ever has been. And um, I just wanted to thought it would be a nice way to make them sort of relevant and, you know, bring you into the, bring you into sort of, his dialogue and um, and his words. So I really just sort of wanted to sort of um, create just sort of a multifaceted um, um, and you know varied message. I think one one um, side of the monument with the um, Birmingham jail is more introspective. It's um, I think it's kind of, I, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of simply powerful. Um, seeing that, and I don't have my PowerPoint, so it, is that okay if I don't have it with me? You guys all right with that? Or do you want me to share that? The PowerPoint, oh, you have mute, you're on mute. <laughs> That's fine, Jane, you're, you're welcome to, to speak without sharing it. We did share the proposals with everybody who's okay. here tonight. Okay, so, the, so they're- uh, The most advice. have looked at them and they do have the ability to look at it after as well. Okay, perfect. So um, I, if I reference it, so, um, so um, I just thought, that um, him in the sort of the light of the um, uh, writing in the light of the um, jail cell, um, that powerful uh, on the ledger pad that I think he was given. Um, and just, you know, I, I, if I could, I would keep some of the papers sort of around him and just him sort of deep in thought. I was um, always in, um, inspired by Michelangelo and I think there's, um, the writer that you see in one of the um, uh, photographs that I included in the proposal where um, there is that writer deep in thought. And I just really thought, you know, it was also sort of talked about two of his ways of his ministry and his activism was through the written word. And then through, um, of course, his, his uh, voice and his way he delivered his words were so powerful. So I just thought it was sort of really two different facets of um, his activism. Um, 
in the um, piece um, where he is um, on the steps, I thought um, I, a lot of times that we don't see him as the reverend. And I really sort of wanted to sort of keep um, that sort of uh, his, just his openness, you know, his, his um, when you uh, watch the I Have a Dream speech, if you watch that, um, you know, closely, the, um, where he gets to the part of the speech where let freedom, freedom ring, where he repeats that phrase, he brings his arms up. And um, I just love that open arm gesture. So I think there's just, just some beautiful, just sort of um, different views and different aspects of his, um, of his character and his activism. Um, I also liked the thought that, you know, you could walk up those steps and stand in his arms. I just really thought that was, I wanted to be welcoming and just show of how much he gave of himself. You know, he was, you know, gave his life. So I just really wanted to see um, that kind of, you know, openness and maybe not really vulnerable, but um, he was not afraid to, um, to expose himself to, to things that, um, you know, that um, the powers and the, you know, the, anyway, so um, I um, thought that they would be nicer, a little bit um, over life size. Um, I really would also depend on the site and how they are sited. That's really important. I don't know if there's um, a, some parks that we can interject these pieces in, but um, I think we might have to do something with the landscaping and I'd like to work with someone locally that we can sort of, um, and I have that sort of uh, in the budget where we could um, incorporate um, the two sites to make them, you know, correspond to each other. Um, I wanted to add the word, I'm jumping around, I'm sorry, but I wanted to add the words to the front of the steps. When you look at the, um, the there's a um, newspaper article that was written um, and that had his speech that is, I think it was written just a few days after that he had delivered the speech, um, I have a dream on the steps. And there's something about the font that is just really fascinating. I don't know what, um, what, paper published it but I just really thought that would be nice to have those um those quotes sort of right on the in the on the front of the steps as you walked up the steps you could see um those um an excerpt from uh, I have a dream and we'll have to just you know I'd like to work with the committee to decide what words are um are, are most relevant I think that I have kind of put down um the jangling discord um, let freedom ring. I, I thought that was, um, uh, I, I thought it would be really fun to sort of bring together the two cities with um, a bell um, to have the, maybe the community help create two bells that would, um, they could ring. And, um, and so that hopefully that we can make them where they have this, you know, this beautiful, um, harmonic sort of sound. Um, I haven't done too much bell work, but I think that'd be fun to explore. And I just think that would be a really beautiful way to sort of join the cities is through that sound. Um, and um, so I think this piece is sort of contrast and um, also um, uni unifying um, because we just sort of bring together um, the, um, the very character of um, the Reverend Martin Luther King. Um, let's see, I, um, I have, I'm gonna go through my notes to make sure I'm saying everything I wanted to say. I think that the, um, it's really important that, you know, we may paraphrase out of the um, both pieces of literature, but I think it would be important somewhere, whether in plaques to have the each piece um, written and um, so that we can revisit those words, those powerful words from, from both of um, the letter and um, the speech. Um, I'm just gonna go through my notes to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. 
I think that um, I would really like to um, work with the community. I thought they could even help create the bell on the bells. Um, I would sort of help make the form and then we could um, work with the community to sort of create, you know, the, the way each bell is, is, um, is um, designed. And so it would be part of a community outreach. Um, I'd also like to maybe just make sure that the pieces are beautifully graphic, you know, in meaning that we could use them for um, t-shirts and things like that to help, you know, fundraise and sort of, you know, um, bring revenue afterwards, something that people could take home. So I just want to really make sure that there's um, some beautiful graphics that we can pull from both pieces. Um, I thought oh, another thing would be fun is to um, have a website that's about the sculpture and how it's made. I did a piece in um, of a veteran in uh, Beverly, Massachusetts, where um, it was a square where um, the, they picked up the Vietnam young boys to take them to Boston for their, um, for their first line of duty. And um, the college um, did a beautiful like um, website that talked about the creation of the sculpture and the creation of the site, and then had um, each of the boys' um, bibliographies because there was 11 boys that were uh, never came home. So I just think it's, um, because, you know, the high school kids and the, the, they're just so, it's just so easy for them to use that. And they, they like that medium. And I just think it'd be fun to sort of bring that community and also the younger with the, with more words and um, written words and maybe things that they write that's inspired by the sculptures or um, so um, I think that would be a fun way to involve the community. So do you have any questions for me? <laughs> Yeah, so we'll open it up. Thank you so much for, for sharing with us. Uh, and anybody who would like to ask a question, please please unmute yourself and, and feel free to engage with Jane while we have her here this evening. I see that you've proposed uh, the two different designs and I've, I've reviewed the presentations. I'm just curious if you have thoughts about which one you would propose putting in which city and if there's any intention behind that decision. You know, um, I think that would depend on the community. I've, you know, um, not seeing the sites. Um, I think it would depend on um, where they um, would just, you know, I, I don't know if one, one side of the river would be, you know, um, would take something taller or if there's another place that might create, because I think that the, the um, letters from the Birmingham jail is a little bit more intimate. So I think while one is, um, is I guess, um, uh, more of a um, more visual and, and I guess it's more of, um, um, I don't know how to say, it's just um, oh, a lot of losing words, of course. Um, it's um, where you can see it from a distance distance, the other piece is more intimate, I think, and would, would draw you in. Although I think they're both have a really beautiful uh, graphicness, but I just, um, I think that it would be, um, so I think I would um, consider that. And also maybe the, the audiences as well. You know, I think, um, you know, perhaps letter, um, the letter from Birmingham Jail where he was speaking to the, the, uh, the um, his, uh, white reverends that maybe it might be um, important to have that where he spoke to um, uh, that would be um, St. Joseph, right? I think I was <laughs> for some reason I was getting these mixed up and then Bentonville would be um, maybe the steps. Oh, I I um... I'm, I'm probably already full anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm Sharon Brown. 
Um, but uh, your your initial words of needing him even the more today really got me. <laughs> um, is so true. The bells. That is fantastic. Oh, uh, we've been in discussion on how we can make these two monuments pretty much talk to each other or be a part of each other, even though they would be in the two different cities. And I never thought about bells and the idea of maybe a certain time of day or week or uh, on, on his birthday or uh, to be able to oh, ring the bells across the river at the same time, certainly, oh my God, I, I just gives me chills. Um, thank you for that. Thank you for that, um, that execution, that thought process that you, um, just for us, <laughs> just for us. Um, you, as an artist, and, and these words, these words that you speak of, uh, you know, we, we think about the visual and, and something to see and to touch, but the words to our art, aren't they? <laughs> and for you to take those two um, moments in his life and in our lives, in history, to want those to be remembered is, that's huge. And um, I, all I can say is that you have, uh, your thought process amazes me. <laughs> Um, and I, I, I'm almost wanting to ask, by any chance, were you there? <laughs> or are you just so well studied or engaged? It's, you, you, you make me feel like I need to ask you, were you at the march? <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I could have been, I tell you. I, um, I, I have some dear friends who were um, freedom writers. Um, and... Um, We've had a really a lot of um, great conversations, and um, they are um, friends of Martin Luther King's family. And so they, um, I showed them my concept after I had it done, and um, they were they were moved too. So I, I, it was just something I was just working in the studio, and I just thought, how how can we bring this? I want to somehow unify you know the cities and I just thought you know it's let freedom ring and I just thought it would just be beautiful it's just just to hear it ring you know there's that hope thank you and you know these are these are works in progress so I, um, I, I really believe that sculpture is a team sport and um, I am welcome to comments. And, you know, I feel like these are something that will, these, these are just concepts, you know, these, these figures. And so we can develop them together. Um, that's really something I feel important about that is that this committee and the community work together to sort of really make the, um, uh, the image that we that we want to see and live with and that will really so um, so the next you know if we were to go on to the next phase um, that's when we really sort of need to get down to the sort of the brass tacks and really just make sure that we you know in the maquettes and developing these maquettes that we really get exactly what we want to see in the larger piece so this is this is the fun part this is the part that we get to blue sky and and um, sort of just really develop this together. I really, really believe that this is, um, it's a team sport, so. Jane, would you speak a little bit about, about that team sport and, and <sighs> what, what that process has been like for you, maybe on a past project or, or just some in general? Um. Um, you know, so from here, um, you know, I've, I certainly have, um, you know, interjected sort of like how I, this develops, but now sharing that with you, 
you know, you may see, you know, you may have a flash of, you know, of a, you know, it might inspire anyone from the, the, the committee or the community that's, you know, it's like, wow, this is, this could go here. And I, I'd be, o I'm open to that. So um, I um, have done, a, m most of my um, pieces are, have been done like that, you know, I'm, this is just clay. We can move it around now. This is really the um, fun part. So I've done pieces where I've actually sort of moved things around right in front of the committee. So if we see things we want to change or do um, in the next process where I start like a more refined maquette, these are just very quick st studies, you know, smaller. And um, so we can just really, you know, it'll, um, you know, get, do more research on, um, you know, on the Reverend as well and, um, and rely on the expertise of, of, you know, the committee that really understand who he was and what, you know, and, uh, you know, I just, I, I get a deeper sense of, you know, his likeness and his being. And I think we do that through, you know, I do th that through study and, and conversation. One of the things that we've been grappling with is our, our second figure for each city. Um, and we've had conversations that, you know, we've had many names suggested uh, and we haven't really had our aha moment yet uh, in, in that process. And there, there has been discussion of, well, maybe, maybe it's not a single second figure. You know, maybe it's uh, something that is symbolic. Maybe it is, uh, the ability to, to put more than one name is something almost like a donor wall kind of concept. Um, have, what have been your thoughts or curiosities about the second figure as you've been thinking about the, the project? Well, you know, it is interesting because I really feel like, I, I think the scale of these figures needs to be larger than life. And I don't know if that second figure maybe, um, you know, I mean, he needs to be the scale, you know, this scale. Um, I'm not sure if the other figures, you know, if if they, I'm, I'm not gonna say they're not that important, but they're maybe not warrant that, but but we don't, you know, I don't know who that you're considering, but um, I think like in that park, like if we create like a park-like setting, um, maybe we could do something with some plaques and, using that written word maybe there's something that sort of how the stories relate maybe that we could sort of maybe if the figure is maybe life size but there's still that same um dialogue that we create you know so that there's um i did it i i should send this to you guys i just did a piece um a women's um monument this is um, i just thought about this and um in estes park where I had two life-size figures. And then around the perimeter, I did um, 10 other women, but they were, they were smaller sculptures with plaques below. So there might be a way that we could do even more than one figure. There might be a few figures, you know, that would kind of help, uh, you know, create a dialogue. So you could even have more than just the one figure. And then that way you're not really competing with you know, um, the larger than life and then life. So maybe we just go maybe like even half life size or um, smaller and then do some things with some pedestals and do maybe even a few figures. Um, and that might be sort of, um, that was, it's, it's really beautiful. And it's, I, um, I, it, I just placed it at the end of September and I've heard a lot of comments about um, how this is really taught um, it's, it's about the history of Estes Park through, you know, what women's contributions. So it would, you know, there people, I think there's 12 or 10 plaques um, and they spend a lot of time reading them. And I, I don't know, that might be sort of a fun way to, um, you know, with, in pedestals doing some smaller pieces with some plaques that, you know, sort of just give you a, maybe um, a fuller picture of the community by doing a few, you know, maybe some other, you know, a few more figures. I'll send you, um, 
I'll send you some photos of that. Great. And uh, of that one installation. Of our, one of yeah. our listeners, uh, Barbara, just sent us a link to your, your website, I believe, that has some pictures on it as well, multiple figures. Um, I want to see all of your work. You just, you make strength look so soft and fragile look so strong. I just, I want to touch <laughs> it really badly. I think, oh. especially the girls. I just, you make me, you know, feel proud of womanhood when I see oh. your work. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And I, um, I, if, if the Estes Park um, piece isn't online, because uh, I just installed it, I'll, also, I'll send you some photos, if you don't mind. Because I just, I think that might be a really, Maybe instead, and then you may not have to just do you know, encapsulate it into one figure, but maybe a few figures from, um, and, and this was different eras. Some um, couple of the women were living. Some of the people um, were deceased, and it just um, you know, one of them was Alberta Falls out um, in Rocky Mountain National Park. Our, our Alberta Falls was named after her and her husband. They named some of the things the. Um, uh, things in the national park and then Isabella Bird was an author that visited you know Rocky Mountain National Park so you know you know your community I think that might be a fun way to um, it was it's really effective people really really um, spend spend time and um, looking at the figures oh so that might be something to consider and then you're not really thinking why is this figure not you know smaller so I, I don't know and it's in a beautiful plaza that I created. So that'd be kind of a, um, a fun way to sort of bring the pieces together too. We'd love to see that. Yes, I'd, I'd be happy to share those out with the with. The okay, group. perfect, That's sorry. Great. I should have thought about sending that along, but I just installed it. So <laughs> it's like, it's been a kind of a whirlwind for me this, this month. So <laughs> it's good. Understandable. Hmm. Other questions or comments from, from our listeners? Jane, do you have questions for us? Um, you know, um, I, I, a site visit would, would be probably the, a really important place to start. So um, it's, you know, um, I really would like to see the site. Um, and I think that will help develop the figures as well. You know, I, I feel like um, they really need to work within the environment and, um, creating a space. Um, do you have um, some landscape architects or things like that in your area? Because I'd like to use as much local um, input as I could. So I don't know if you have uh, maybe some suggestions for me for um, contractors or architects in your area. I um, sort of left some room in the budget, of course, for, I think sculptures, one half of a um, uh, placement. The other half is really the site and developing that site that really helps really create that story. So I think um, we really need to spend some time um, developing that as well. We want to really bring the viewer in and um, give them, a, you know, and hold them and, you know, keep them, <laughs> keep them the coming back too. <laughs> so. Absolutely. And we'd be happy to to help with the resources on you know the local resources to be working with and i guess one other question too is um i um in reading the budget so the site in, is all inclusive um and i don't know if we have to build a park from scratch i wasn't quite sure of that so i don't know if there's like curb and gutter or anything like that is not i don't have to worry about that or, or mostly just the site and the park do you have any? Yeah, so I, we can give you a little bit. We have a really wonderful engagement uh, committee that has been going out uh, to various festivals and events in our communities and has been uh, putting up maps and asking people for feedback about uh, where they would like to see the monuments. And, and Grace or others, please feel free to jump in <laughs> and talk about that. Uh, but we have, you know, we've received quite a bit of feedback about where people think would be a good location. Uh, and then we do have relationships with both of our cities and city parks. Um, and, and it's likely that we would be placing these monuments in a city park in each city. Um, so we have those relationships, you know, we have good relationships right now and we just haven't okay. finalized where. 
Okay. Yeah. Cause I, you know, I kind of did sort of wanted to include sort of like some site prep and some, you know, hardscape, but I didn't really, you know, do a lot of budget for concrete steps and, you know, um, sidewalks. I didn't, you know, so mostly this is just sort of a hardscape and, um, and the sculptures themselves. So, um, and then well, that's just something we'll have to just really, you know, define our budget really well. I'm really particular about coming in <laughs> on budget and in time. So I don't wanna be late and I don't wanna go over cost. So we just have to really make sure that we just get all those things sort of um, mapped out. So I wanna have a successful sculpture placement and I'm, um, I love doing this and I love working with communities. And I um, did the Ann Arbor Art Festival um, for, oh my gosh, almost 20 years, would come back to the Michigan area and uh, go through your area. So I, um, I have lots of collectors there and I, it's, it's a near and dear place to my heart. So not too far from home. I feel like it's home, <laughs> Ann Arbor anyway. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna see if I can show you this really quickly. I don't know if you'll be able to see this at all. But you can kind of see I developed these this pathway. So here's the main figures. And these little ones. And so that oops. It just went away. It just went away. And I'll send you some better photos, but it's and then there was just sort of like a little sort of like a discovery. So and the plaques were like okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So anyway. That's great. Well, I um, I think that's all I have. I mean, you know, there's I think that you, there's probably more in my written um, proposal. I'm just trying to maybe look through. Is there anything else I wanted to say? Um, and definitely looking um, through the, you know, his letter and his speeches to find what words um, we'd like to use and to have resonate. Um, that, might, that might be the hard part, but then maybe with some of those plaques, we could maybe even include more plaques with some of his, um, his words. I think that's so important. Um, so yeah, it'll be fun. I'd love to do this project. And I think the bells would really be fun and I don't know where um, we, you know, have to make a little bell tower or something. Well, that's something we'll have to design. But I think that the idea of it is really is. It just came to me in a flash in the studio, and I thought, oh my gosh, it'd just be so beautiful to, to hear that, that you know, that beautiful sound of freedom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Sharon, I see you you and Mac chatting over there. Any last comments before? We <laughs> I'm all alone in my office. I can't check. <laughs> She's just agreeing with the bell concept, which I think too is very beautiful. Yeah. And I really and do I, think that I still like the the we discussed months ago. I still like the idea of the 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 lighthouse or lights beaming across at each other at some point you know, with the bridge and all. Uh, maybe there's a combination of one night lights and the other bells or something, just let freedom ring. That's, um, it's just so, so much hope in it. It's just so much hope in it. Yeah, and, you know, and just if there's this set of beautiful, if we could have them just be two, you know, um, sounds that just, come together, I just think it would be really be beautiful. Oh God. So so you're you're looking at harmonize some kind of music, some kind of ch chime something, like a mm -hmm. choir of bells or something. <laughs> <laughs> at least two har harmonizing, you know. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Just, the bells are talking, talking the to each other. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> They're both saying let freedom ring in let a different way. <laughs> The remake of the talking drums. Oh, the remake of the talking drums. The talking talking bells. bells. Talking bells. <laughs> There's that writing again. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. 
I was wondering if the um, historical figures, the additional ones could be part of the bell too. That might be something to explore. Mm -hmm. You oh, know, have them good. be a part of that. Part idea. of the structure, yeah. Because mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. well, we that, will have that, to. That entices me as well that the part about uh, these pieces giving, um, adding to local history perhaps and telling the story uh, the surrounding pieces are telling history that of the, the local of both cities. And um, that lets me uh, keep hope alive for, uh, and I'll drop this on her. I haven't dropped it on anybody else, but I'm going to drop it on her tonight because she's just been so extra special, right? Um, I, I can now, with Tom Senator Thomas Hart Benton, the Benton Harbor namesake, uh, there may be room for him <laughs> in that cluster of people. So um, I, I like that, that idea of local I, history. Yeah, and maybe not just, you know, just having, you know, doing smaller sculptures, you know, that aren't quite life-size where, you know, you can add, you can bring more, which I think might be really, really nice. So, yeah. So <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Jane. Right. Appreciate with us tonight. It's been really great to meet you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Lovely. Take care. Have a good night.